In Holy Week, on Good Friday, we find Jesus on the cross. We call this Good Friday. It is a Good Friday because by Jesus' death, he became the final, complete sacrifice for our sins. We could never have erased our sins. Our hands, in fact, would have been forever stained with the guilt of our sins for an entire lifetime. And yet, through his death on the cross, Jesus makes the one perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Later, the Apostle Peter would write, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. This is almost too incredible for words, that my Messiah, our Messiah, suffered once and for all upon the cross for my sins, that I do not need to pay penance for my sins, that I do not need to try harder to earn my salvation, that I do not need to do good deeds in order to be forgiven. This is what Martin Luther, the Roman Catholic priest, who became the great reformer of the church in the 16th century, called the Great Exchange, Christ's righteousness for my sin. Incidentally, that little phrase, once and for all, that Peter uses about the death of Jesus Christ, is the same once and for all that Jude uses in his little New Testament letter, right before the book of Revelation, where he appeals that we contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. This is a gospel that has been delivered once and for all. That's why we have no liberty to change it, to get behind it, to add to it, or to subtract it. The gospel has been entrusted to us once and for all. Our Lord's physical agony and death produced for us a spiritual atonement with God and demonstrated God's amazing, unfathomable love for us. Listen to these words from Anglican author C.S. Lewis. God, who needs nothing, loves into existence holy superfluous creatures in order that he may love and perfect them. He creates the universe already foreseeing, or should we say seeing, there are no tenses in God the buzzing cloud of flies about the cross, the flayed back pressed against the uneven stake, the nails driven through the mesial nerves, the repeated incipient suffocation as the body droops, the repeated torture of back and arms as it is time after time for breath's sake hitched up. If I may dare the biological image, God is the host who deliberately creates his own parasites, causes us to be that we might exploit and take advantage of him. Herein is love. This is the diagram of love himself, the inventor of all that loves. I encourage you to see the cross as the diagram of love himself. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. Let us pray. By your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross, and passion, by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, peace and rest to the dead, to your holy church, unity and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory, for with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen.